Hi, my name is Gina Stoliker, and I am representing California State University at Bakersfield uh, in Class 588, Teaching for Diversity and Social Justice. I'm here to provide you a professional development presentation um, on the topic of affirming diversity, implications in education. Okay, um, we're going to start by talking a little bit about how um, maintaining and affirming one's identity um, in school is, is really important for students' learning. Um, a pervasive, many of us know that a pervasive and a positive self sense of cultural health heritage is related to mental health and social well-being. Basically, it's good that we have a positive sense of who we are, right? Um, it makes us feel good. It makes us feel good with other people. It makes us feel good while we're talking to ourselves. Uh, bilingual and multicultural programs can be a positive and integral component of the learning environment for students. Promoting students' native language, whether it be through bilingual uh, programs or ESL programs, which is English as a Second Language. Um, the, both of those type programs help make language minority students visible uh, and respected in the school environment, which of course is so important for them to feel safe and secure um, and ready to learn. There are many, many ways that teachers can support um, native language approaches in, in their classroom. Um, in, especially by encouraging the parents to use native language at home um, by speaking to their students and by reading, continuing to read and write um, in their home native language. Um, uh, in the classroom, allowing students to work in same, same language groups if you have um, enough uh, speakers of the same language, then obviously making those groups um, accessible, especially for vocabulary, um, encouraging students to use words in their native language to explain what they mean when they don't know how to do it in English um, really helps to bridge the gap between um, what their experiences are um, in their native language and their new learning context that, they're hap that is happening at school. Um, it really helps um, them to be able to express what they need to express when they don't know how to do it. And then obviously learning what they're trying to say in English. Um, Making sure that there's uh, plenty of books in the native languages um, stocked in the classroom is very helpful, um, obviously, so that they can continue um, building literacy in their native language. Um, asking ESL students, English, English as a second language students, to teach other students, so students that don't have a second language, um, they're English only. Um, some of their home languages is really beneficial for, for both students. Um, making multicultural word charts for commonly used words in both languages is helpful, especially when students are brand new to the language and in the early stages of acquisition. Um, encouraging students to use native language in the classroom and on the playground. So um, don't discourage them. You know, some some schools might have a policy of English only, and and that's just not um, that's not being supportive of of multicultural education. So making sure to allow that is great. Um, promoting the learning of second languages by the staff is also really cool, um, especially if you have a large percentage of um, a certain um, language group, you know. For example, in the city where I teach in Roseville, California, um, Roseville has a lot of Spanish-speaking families. So if, if the whole school might provide classes, either to the teachers, staff development classes, or an ongoing thing where, you know, the entire school is on board with learning um, with learning a second language would be so amazing. Okay, let's talk a little bit about um, what does a comprehensive multicultural program look like. Um, it has to be an integral part of the whole school experience for all of the students, not just some of them. Um, it can obviously help new students adjust to the community. It helps them get used to the school and the school culture. Um, only by reforming the entire school environment can big changes happen, right, in the attitudes and the behaviors and the achievement for all students. Um, you know, encouraging high expectations for each and every student is, is crucial. Um, there may need to be some modifications that happen so that, um, you know, the school can, can make this multicultural program work better. Um, things such as Conflict resolution skills need, might need to be taught, um, how to work cooperatively in cooperative learning groups, multicultural uh, 
curriculum development, so exactly what, what do we want to teach. Um, parent and community outreach is huge because um, that's the whole reason why we want to strengthen the ties between home and school, enriching the students' lives um, and making it more um, accessible to everyone. Um, and then eliminating one of the specific things would be eliminating tracking, which we'll talk about in a little bit more in detail soon. Okay, other than just the academic side of things, we also um, want to make sure that there's support beyond the academics. Um, schools need to provide inclusive and meaningful activities that a wide range of students are attracted to, that they want to, that they want to come join. Um, many schools have obviously cut and eliminated all of the great art programs and music and all of those um, extracurricular activities that students really love. Um, and while all students have felt that, the most profoundly felt felt has been at schools that serve those economically deprived and culturally marginalized students. So um, the Arts Education Working Group and more than 60 national arts and arts education advocate or organizations have endorsed um, a statement paper which is entitled The Arts Education Creating Student Success in School, Work, and Life. And um, it basically asserts that a child's education is absolutely not complete unless it includes the art. And we're going to look a little bit closer at that, um, that paper here. They, again, the arts education creating student success in school, work, and life. Um, a quote from that paper, our nation needs schools to prepare students to meet the demands of the 21st century. These demands cannot be met without comprehensive arts education in our nation's schools. Um, again, that's just kind of putting into a statement how important arts and arts education are to developing the whole child um, and providing skills that, that employers are going to need in the 21st century. Um, the arts make a tremendous impact on the developmental growth of every child. It kind of levels the learning field across socioeconomic boundaries. Um, many students, low achieving students, um, often become high achievers in these art settings. It hits that creative side where, you know, math and strategic spelling and writing and different things like that aren't hitting. This art, um, drama, music, uh, creative arts um, can all hit those, those lower achieving students in those traditional subjects and they then become high achievers in art settings and their success in the arts transfers over so that they then become higher achievers in other subjects. It really does transfer. Um, the arts reach students that are not otherwise engaged, bridging the broad spectrum of learning styles. Again, um, the arts play a unique role in boosting learning and achievement for young children. So um, we know, I mean, obviously, little kids love to play um, in any type of arts, dramatic arts, theater, music. They respond to music so well, um, hands-on art. Students with disabilities especially are drawn to arts and can, can learn um, and create strides with the arts. Students from under-resourced environments and students needing remedial instruction. So again, just those uh, different learning styles, those unique learning styles that's not hit with a traditional um, method and strategies can really be um, engaged through the arts. Okay, mutual accommodation means basically this is um, kind of talking about how teachers and schools need to accept and build students' experiences and identities. So bringing into um, the classroom their language, culture, family knowledge, um, and legitimizing that, making it an expression of intelligence and somewhere to start for their learning um, instead of marginalizing it or putting it to the back burner and just kind of moving away from that. Um, it allows schools and teachers to use the resources that all students already have um, and that we work towards the academic success that everyone's looking for. Um, neither the student nor, or the teacher, neither of us, um, are going to expect complete accommodation. It's, it's a give and take. It's a two-way. It's negotiation, um, mutual accommodation so that we both work together using the best strategies that each of us have. Um, and, and in that way, both students, teachers, parents, everyone um, is really equally enriched. Um, more on building those relationships, which are so key. Developing healthy relationships with your students is the best way to maintain the hope 
and joy that drew teachers in education in the first place, right? We, um, we love our students, that's why we teach. So um, students also love their teachers. Students indicate teachers with similar racial and ethnic backgrounds as themselves also um, can make a big difference in their education. So one implication is now that schools need to recruit teachers who are as diverse as their student body. Um, it doesn't mean that they can't build bonds with teachers that are not similarly racial or ethnic, but um, it's just nice for them to, um, to see that a variety of cultural backgrounds um, are able to be successful in education and they perceive the significance of education in their own lives because they see these role models that are very similar to themselves. Um, teachers need to support whatever type of support families are able to give, um, not just the traditional coming into the classroom. You know, we have a variety of family structures, um, language barriers, cultural barriers that might just not, it just prevents some families from being able to get into the classroom, but they support their children's, um, you know, homework and study skills and making sure that they're eating and sleeping well and all of the other things that families can give and that teachers really need to support the, the different type of supports that families are able to give. Um, okay, let's go on to expanding some definitions here. Um, we've kind of always had this um, old school designation of an American that's been thought of as white, English speaking, um, probably descended from Europe. Others, even if they've been in the U.S. for many generations, and regardless if they speak only English or have little contact with their native heritage, they may not automatically be considered American the way that white English speaking uh, members of society are automatically considered American. Um, our present and future diversity demands an expanded definition, a more inclusive definition of what an American is. A um, hundred years ago, most people chose to assimilate, made, tried to get more like each other, and um, this m idea of more of a melting pot where everyone came together and we all melted and blended together. Um, used to exist, but however, today one may choose to retain more of their native, native culture um, due to a couple different things, you know, um, the civil rights movement as well as the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender rights movement has led to more people um, feeling free to assert one's identity. Um, and, and as well as the number and the diversity of immigrants has been unequaled in our history. So we have um, a larger variety of, um, of types of people you know, coming from all different types of, or all different areas of the world. And um, that diversity has has been unfounded until now. It, we haven't experienced it. There are many levels of multicultural education. And, um, you know, multi -education, multicultural education is a process. So it's going to be changing. It's not just going to be, okay, we're now there. Um, it's always going to be um, in progress and you need to always be thinking of how it can be improved. Um, when you're just starting out, beginning with an inclusive curriculum and trying to get inclusive instructional strategies um, is a great way to start. Start out small by invest, investigating the student's own culture. Sometimes the students don't even think about what their own culture is and how um, the values of the society they live in influences how they feel. So um, just making sure to get all of their um, investigation of their own culture and, and who they go to school with, who just in their own class and at their own school before branching out and um, looking at, you know, multicultures. Um, also become a multicultural person yourself is probably really important. You know, if each of us um, simply learn more about other people and other events that we, we don't know a lot about, um, will help to confront our own biases, will help um, eliminate racism, and we'll be able to learn to see reality from the variety of perspectives of people from all over the world um, and not just our own perspective. Multicultural education. Um, the, this is, um, other than starting out and just getting, you know, the process going, what, what are we really looking for? There's different levels. Um, and a mo monocultural perspective reflects a different framework for understanding diversity. Um, we're looking for a multicultural one. So um, the, the lowest level would be um, a to considered tolerance. That's kind of to tolerate differences means that you're enduring them, but you're not really embracing them. And unfortunately, some American schools are still at the tolerance level. 
Um, the next level would be acceptance, and that's where many schools also in America are. Um, if we accept differences, we recognize their significance. Um, that might be reflected in like a cultural fair or a multicultural program, some sort of translation of forms and newsletters that go home, but that's about it. There's not, um, there's not a lot, you know, there. There's just the bare minimum. Um, respect is the third level of support and that would be offering programs like bilingual education it would have frequent positive interactions with parents especially those that speak different languages or have different cultures than the majority um, and ad additive multicultural would be the goal um, the last and final highest level of support the one that we're hopefully everyone is striving to get to would be the affirmation the solidarity and the critique level um which we'll go into a little bit of detail here um this is what based on the premise that the most powerful learning happens when student work through differences even if they're even if they're challenging you know um, we learn so much from the challenging parts of our educational experiences over um, those that just come easy to us accepting the various cultures and language of students and their families as legitimate and embracing them as vehicles for learning um, this goes into account you know those background experiences and and their reality their perspective where um, where they come from what what their their life has been like up until when they enter your room you know has so much play on to on to how they're going to learn in your class and how you can be the best teacher for them um, this level of support is concerned with equity and social justice for all people um, the conflict is not avoided conflict is accepted as an inescapable part of learning um, again that goes back to the challenging part of you know that's where the most powerful learning really does happen uh, students celebrate, they reflect on, and they challenge diversity. Uh, the highest expectations um, for all students and instructional and strategies would include a range so that we're making sure to get each and every student um, where they need to be in the way that they best can get there. Um, families would be welcome, supported in the school, and would be incorporated into classroom programs and activities. Um, all courses are multicultural in essence and students of all backgrounds are visible in all aspects of school so extracurricular activities sports um, clubs academia everything <coughs> excuse me and everyone in the school is becoming a multicultural person um, and the process is dynamic it's ever-changing um, so that's what we strive for multicultural education at its finest um, affirming diversity um, you know making sure that the educational process is fair equitable and um, supportive for all students in 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 all ways my references there um, include the arts education working group um, which was the um, retrieve from from that website there um, Nito and Bodhi the book affirming diversity the socio-political context of multicultural education and Horowitz and web Dempsey. I appreciate your attention and um, I look forward to a more multicultural educational experience for all of our students. Thank you so much.